Welcome to episode two of Raiders of the Lost Art. Um, as you know, I am Finbar, and today we're going to get a little bit deeper inside my brain, creativity, and a process of composing for active listening. Um, so, look, you know, I'm still learning. This is episode two, I'm still trying to work out how to run this system. Today I'm running a very large logic session. Um, on top of live streaming software, on top of notepads and web pages. So hopefully uh, this is all running from my MacBook Pro, which is also controlling my whole studio. So let's hope that everything goes well. But um, as per live television, we will, or live broadcast, we'll see, see how it goes. Um, I have comments up here. <clears throat> hopefully everything, um, you, you can hear and see everything. It should be streaming out live on LinkedIn on Facebook and YouTube all at the same time. So hopefully the comments should all come in. Um, again, I'm just trying to work all this stuff out. So if I do see your comments, I will try and respond live. If not, we'll, I'll just keep talking. So with that being said, today what I wanted to do is I wanted to um, pull apart a track off my new album, Senche, or Slanche, depending on how you say it. It's a Gaelic word for storyteller. And look, I wrote this... Um, this track was really dedicated to my father, who is one of the most incredible storytellers that you know I've ever met, and obviously I have a lot of Irish heritage. Um, but look, without me getting into too much of that, um, when I compose, um, I'm thinking about the end result, active listening, and how do I take listeners on a journey? And so this song has, like a lot of my other songs, it has a, um, a lot of different sort of colors and textures and different movements between different styles and different emotions. So what I thought I'd do is I would play you the track and then I'll start to break it down. Now this has got a lot of heavy sort of um, thought processes involved. There's a lot of, it might blow your mind how my mind thinks, but just bear with me because you know I'll be talking about how I transcribe colors of camouflage into rhythmic sequences, how I use Morse code, um, how I then, um, use offsets of time signatures and look at refraction of light and how I then transcribe that into music. So I'm going to break down one small section of the music, but in no uncertain terms, there's a lot of that throughout each one of these tracks. And you might have read in the press release and some of the other press about my album, The Code, it does have a lot of hidden codes with inside the music. So today I'll be pulling apart one section of the music and going deep on it. Um, and hopefully it'll give you... Um, some inspiration to be creative. It's 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 about how, at least for me, it's about how do you go a little bit, how do you push the envelope in being creative in music composition, music structure, for an intended result of active listening on the back end. So, with that being said, let me uh, let me get into the track and I'll play the track for you. So this is a track called uh, Slanche or Senche. All right, let me get in here. All right. Okay, so here we have the logic session. I'll get this started. Hopefully that's coming through fine. very ethereal pads um, running a B major 13 RP down on the guitar, which is a pedal tone or a series of pedal tones which happen underneath the chord structure is trying to create this going into the story. happening different time signatures which breaks apart the groove to come back into the new groove now with a bass can do.
Okie dokie. Um, so that was the track. So let's have a bit of a deep dive into here and um, get into what I wanted to talk about today. So um, if we get to this section here, which I'm calling the camouflage um, section. <music> Okay, so let's start pulling it apart. Um, let's get to the top line base, which is just here, and I'll solo this up um, to give an example of what's, what I'm doing here. Okay, so what, what I've done here is in my, ex there's a look, there's a lot of experimentation that goes on. This isn't something that I just go, oh, I'm gonna do this and I'm, I'm, this is gonna work. 99% of the experiments uh, that I did when I wrote this album didn't work, but it, the experiments actually helped me sort of get to a point where I could actually start to figure out things quicker in terms of what might or might not work. And so with this concept of hiding codes inside the music, you might have heard that music and gone, okay, look, that sounds like an, a, a good track. But when we go inside here, let's, let me explain what's going on here. And I'm gonna try and, um, I'll try and bring this up a bit on the stream just so you can see it in a, in a bit sort of bigger, just so it's a bit easier to see. Um, but, so this is the bass line. And what I have going on here is I've got a sequence of two notes, three notes, four notes, five notes, two and one in the top bass line. So let's just have a listen to that. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, one, two. So it's got one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Now, what I've done here is I went and looked at how do I, how do I look at transferring colors into musical sequences? And what I did was I actually just went over to look at, um, let me see if I can pull this up and see if you can see this on the stream itself. Um, so if, if you go to, if I go and pick a website, for example, this one, um, this is, I can share the links if you guys want, to, want, want the links, but basically this is just a, one of many hex to color generators. And so if we went, uh, if we go and have a look back at Logic and say, look, what have we got here? We've got two notes here, followed by three notes, followed by four notes, followed by five notes, by two, by one in the top bass line in the first sort of musical structure. Um, then let's go over to here and go two, three, four, five, two, one. And we go and put two, three, four, five, two, one in here. Two, three, four, five, two, one. And you'll see that it's that green color here. So um, there it is. Two, three, four, five, two, one is that green. Now, the point of this isn't just to go, oh, green to color sequences. It's about looking at the hidden connections between different things in life, in nature, in science. And in this particular area, I was looking at camouflage and because I wanted to include different hidden codes in there I thought about what color sequences is about trying to hide colors and that's camouflage so camouflage is a, a series of colors in the sequence of patterns that are that might look random but people can actually read ca camouflage patterns but these colors put together help hide the identity of the person or the object that the camouflage is applied to. And so I wanted to try and apply that principle in music. So what better way to do it through colors by applying camouflage. So that's that green color. Hopefully you can see that on the actual stream here, that color. But if you don't, if you can't, I'll, I'll put the link on and you can go and type into a hex color generator, two, three, four, five, two, one. Now, if I go back to logic and I look at the second phrasing section, I've got um, here. Okay, so I've got one, four, five, four, two. One, four, five, four, two. If I go over here and put in here, one, four, five, four, two. One, four, five, four, two. There it is, there. So it's, an, it's another green, it's another section of green. But you might be able to see the difference between the two greens. And it's sort of like a British racing green and an olive drab green. Um, then we go to the next section, so on, so on, so on. And I can give you the color sequences and you can go and check it out yourself if you want. Now, this has a call and answer type section to it. So if we were to, sorry, I've got overlays from my streaming platform here, so I'm just trying to make do. But if we go, if we have a look at what's going on,
And so that one would be three, um, one, two, four, four, five, three, three, four, four, five, three. We go up here. Three, four, four, five, three. Um, three, four, four, five, three. Again, it's it's just another variation on the green. Now, when I did this, um, um, I was really focused. I was actually building a, a um, HK Models Lancaster 132 Lancaster. So I was getting right into the, the, the color schemes. Now, what we've got here on this next section is we've got this a different um, approach here and so what I did let me look at the notes in logic because it was a while ago when I wrote this um, so when my notes section here I have uh, what have I got um, I've actually got the color sequences here but what I've got is okay so this is the where the Morse code bits comes in okay let me zoom in on that okay so I've got dash dash dot dot dash dot 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 dash dot and so that relates to the sequence you may or may not be able to see it on the live stream but it's over here on this side here i've written that sequence and you can see the dash by the longer uh, note and the shorter note here interesting thing is if we go to back to the web and i can again put this link in there's a lot of different online morse code generators here um, and here they are and so you put that sequence in, basically it spells the word green. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually used the word green. So the first three patterns are different variations of camouflage colors. And then I describe that by actually writing the Morse code. Now, it, it sounds ridiculous to do this, but this is just my experimenting brain. It's not about, oh, this is too technical to write music. It's exploring. It's the Raiders of the Lost Ark. It's the, you know, if you look at, say Tomb Raider, you're going on a journey, you don't know what you're going to find, but by pushing the limits of your creativity, you might find a new sound, a new venue, a new area. Now, for example, a lot of people ask me about the time signatures that I'm running on my drum programming and what, what timing am I using here? Well, here is another random, really crazy thing. You might see, you may or may not be able to see what's going on bar-wise here. So I have, um, uh, let's say, I've got a bar of the way it's listed here, three, four, 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 three, four, 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 three, four, four, four. Now, if I put the metronome on, you're going to hear it's going to be out of time. But it has an inherent groove. But if we go to the drums on this section, well, actually, before I do that, before I go into blowing your mind with applying Morse code and color camouflage sequences. If we just l take the technicality out of what I've done, it's just a writing process. So if I just have a listen to the bass. Now, would anyone as a bass player play that problem? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it's not about what you would normally play um, in this case. Well, let me put the drums in. Okay, let me take them out. Let me take the solo off here. Um, So I've got windows on top of windows, so it's making it a little bit hard. Okay, so it's, it's obviously got a bit of a different groove going on, um, but that's inspired by what you're hearing in, in the actual way the drums are syncopated with the, the bass and actually the others. So what I did was I wrote the bass then I applied the, the, I got working on the groove by some of the other instruments. So if I take this off and look at um, some of the other things going on here. Let's put some of these on. These are the MIDI program.
So it's very syncopated, right? Would you normally write that as a musician? Maybe, maybe not. But it's just a way to explore new horizons in rhythm. Now let me go and look at the drums for a second.